Good morning, Vikings. It is with a heavy heart that we begin this week's show. As many of you already know, VHS student Pedro Roman sadly passed away on Monday after a nearly two-year-long battle with leukemia. Pedro was an outstanding athlete and most of all, a friend to everyone. We admire his courage throughout his battle with leukemia and would like to send our deepest condolences to his family and friends. Now, we would like to take a moment of silence in honor of Pedro. Now let's learn a little bit more about Black History Month. Hi Vikings, my name is Amara Stamps, and today we'll be talking about Black culture and its influence on society. When it comes to music, Black culture is most credited for its creation of R&B music and the hip hop slash rap today. But in fact, Black culture's impact on music dates all the way back to when Africans were brought to this country. African American slaves on Southern plantations cultivated their own musical styles, which later evolved to gospel, blues, and what is known as bluegrass and country music today. The rhythms of the drums and the use of instruments like the banjo can be seen in the fabric of modern music genres that we see and know of today. Black culture's influence on American culture doesn't end with its contributions to music. Fashion is also a category in which black people have made their own unique contributions. Many of them have become notable milestones in the fashion industry. Fashion and black culture began in church style in the South. Every day, slaves would put on their Sunday best for church services. It was in a way for them to transform themselves from the hardships of their circumstances to the saints who were ready to worship. In fact, this influence continued into the 40s and the 50s with high couture fashion designer Anne Lowe, who designed the famous wedding dress for Jackie O, an exquisite example of Southern style fashion at its very best. Black people have also helped to create and contribute to music genres of dance that we know today, tap, jazz, modern dance, and hip hop. Jazz dance originated from the African American vernacular dances at the late 1800s to the mid 1900s. Pioneers like Catherine Donham, an academic anthropologist and dancer, made these Caribbean tradition dances into the performing art form we know of today. Thank you for listening, stay tuned, and remember, happy Black History Month. There will be free grabbing of meals for all youth that are 18 years and younger. These will be served every weekday from noon to 2 p.m. at the bus turnaround by the theater. One bagged breakfast and lunch per child will be provided. Now we'd like to take it to Maddox Pars with some important world news updates. Hi, I'm Maddox and here's today's world news. The first story we'd like to cover is a financial shock that has been pretty hard to miss. This of course is the GameStop stock fiasco. If you have no idea what's going on, let me give you a quick rundown. Near the beginning of the pandemic, Wall Street hedge funds, or pooled investments, usually worth billions, noticed that the stores such as GameStop were in big financial trouble. In layman's terms, hedge funds predicted that GameStop was going to lose a lot of money due to their stock plummeting. This is called short selling. As the hedge funds ranked in billions, retail investors on the popular subreddit Wall Street Bets noticed this happening and decided to try and put a stop to it. By convincing everyone they could buy GameStop stock, the price of the stock went from around $30 to more than $340 in under a week. As you can probably expect, the hedge funds that bet GameStop stock would fall lost billions of dollars. This has caused an uproar on Wall Street, and as of Thursday last week, caused popular investing services like Robinhood to restrict retail investors from buying GameStop stock. Although this caused the stock price to fall, it slowly made its way back up, making the retail investors millionaires and causing the hedge funds even more. What does this all mean for the economy as a whole? Only time will tell, though one thing is for sure, never underestimate the power of social media. This Tuesday was Groundhog's Day, meaning that once again, Punxsutawney Phil would come out and see if his shadow was present. Of course, this year, he did see a shadow, which means six more weeks of winter. Because of the pandemic, there was only a small group there to witness it, and it was streamed live. Unfortunately, statistically speaking, Phil has been wrong five out of the past ten years. Luckily, he isn't our only groundhog that helps us predict the seasons. States such as Ohio, North Carolina, and New York have their own groundhogs. Nine years ago in 2012, paleontologists made a discovery of bones consisting of 24 humongous tail vertebrae as well as parts of the pectoral girdle and pelvis. 
claims are made as they could be a new member of the species Titanosaurus, a group of sauropod dinosaurs that wouldn't stop growing. These dinosaurs could reach up to 76 tons and grow up to 122 feet from nose to tail. Although their heights are not yet official, Alejandro Otero, a paleontologist with Argentina's Museo de la Plata, told CNN, It is a huge dinosaur, and we expect to find much more of the skeleton in future field trips, so we'll have the possibility to address with confidence how really big it was. Unfortunately, as large as this new dino may be, it still does not beat the biggest phyla, the blue whale, which amazingly is still with us here today. That's all the world news I have for you today. Now let's take it back to the host. Bands and Color Guard is having a spring clean clothing drive fundraiser. Please donate gently used clothing, shoes, blankets, and more on February 4th, 11th, or 18th from 5 to 7 p.m. to the address on screen. Now we'd like to take it to this week's senior spotlight, Samantha Anderson. Hey everybody, I'm Sam Anderson. I'm a senior at VHS and I, I kind of like music a little bit. So my plans for the future are to go to a four-year university and figure out what I actually want to do. Because I know I want to go to music school and I want to do music, but in terms of my career, I have no idea. I either want to be a rock star or um, travel the country in a van playing gigs, I think. Yeah, when I write music, um, it's all about the moment. I can never schedule a time to sit down and write. It, it doesn't really work that way. When it happens, it happens. I, I take a lot of inspiration from my childhood. So my advice for underclassmen would be take every single class that you want to take. You know, take the art classes, the music classes, the sports, you know, and, and make up the boring ones at COC or, or OFL or something like that. I am working on a new song. It's called Josephine. And um, surprise, surprise, it's about my parts of my childhood. Okay, so I have one single out right now. It's called Constance. I released it in October of last year. And I have a list of everywhere it's out on. So it's out on YouTube. I uploaded it to YouTube. Um, Samantha Anderson Music is my user name. It's out on Apple Music, Spotify, iTunes, Amazon, YouTube Music, or Google Play, whatever, uh, TikTok, iHeartRadio, Deezer, although I don't know anyone who uses Deezer, um, Napster, Pandora, and Tidal. Final push that really got me into music was when I picked up the flute for the first time in third grade. That was kind of seal the deal for me. 100% yes, I do want to be in the music industry in the future. Um, what part of the music industry? I have no idea. We'll figure that out as we go, but um, we'll see what happens. It's a very cutthroat industry, but I mean, if there's other people in the industry that started out just like, just like us and made it, then why, why can't, why can't we? It was great to meet you, Samantha. Now let's take it to Megan Kirk for a few words. Hi Vikings, it's Megan Kirk, one of your varsity cheer captains. And this week's cheer would like to recognize our photography program and our fellow Vikings. Sophia Weeks, Brooke Anderchik, Ethan Nauman, Caden Pakratz, and Eric Tribblecock for their placement in the Regional Scholastic Art and Writing Awards. This competition is the longest running, most prestigious recognition for creative teams. We would also like to wish a good luck to Sophia, who placed in the top 20 students, and we'll move on to the national contest. Way to go, Vikings!
Pedro's legacy will live on and his bravery will never be forgotten. There will be a candlelight vigil in his honor tonight at Central Park at 8 p.m. Please bring purple glow sticks. Rest easy, Pedro.